Um, We're taking again, you live to Terry Parker for a briefing. Let's listen in. Between uh, what I'm being told is about 1,000 to about 1,500 individuals present at the time. But again, let me re reiterate that this shooting took place outside of the stadium and not inside, not inside the stadium area. Can you confirm that the student that was shot, uh, Rain student, shot in the chest and possibly grazed in the face? Um, at this time, I cannot reveal that information. Um, Jackson Sheriff Office, the lead in this particular investigation. And I'm being told that it will be doing a press conference in about 30 minutes after, um, after our press conference here today. Okay, again, I'm not at liberty to share that information. That's information that Jacksonville Sheriff Office will be providing to you um, during their presentation. How many shots were fired, can you tell us? Um, what I can tell you is that, um, that there have been shell casings located, and um, at this time, uh, because we are not the lead, I'm not at liberty to be able to provide that information. But I feel very confident that when JSO have the opportunity to talk with you, they'll be able to provide you the answers to those questions. Well, security two, two protocol things. for this game, because I realized that this wasn't a major football game in the fall, it was a spring game. But I spoke with a parent who was upset because she said to her there wasn't enough security, the same kind of security that you would see during the season. Um, I, um, sir, I would totally disagree with that. When you look at um, the staff and that was at this particular game, um, for this particular game, this would be the normal staff and that we would have if this game was held during the regular football season. Because right. one of the things that we're committed to is making sure that our students, our fans, um, everybody that attends our games are safe. And my job is to make sure that we have sufficient staffing to be able to um, prevent and be able to respond in situations like this. So so the staffing at this game was no different than if it was held during the fall. Two things for you. The student attended which school? Um, again, um, that information will be provided to you by JSO. JSO has got to make sure that they get in contact with the parents and they'll be, they are in a better position to provide that information. And this was Revolt, Terry Parker? Yes, Revolt was playing Terry Parker. Did your yeah. officers at all notice any sort of commotion outside the gate before shots fired? Now, one of the things I can tell you is that um, prior to the shooting, there was um, no incidents in the stadium. There have been no students was ejected, no fighting, or very quiet game. Things was going extremely well. There was only four minutes left in the game when this incident took place. Since this what? happened outside of the stadium, which law enforcement agency was responsible for security outside? Then? Would that been uh, Duval County or JSO? No, I mean, again, outside the stadium, that's still with on, on the property of the Duval County Public School. So that is the responsibility of the Duval County School Police Department. So we had officers that was working the game tonight. And again, this happened outside the stadium and majority of my officers was working inside the stadium. We hadn't reached that point in the game where we transitioned to our traffic pattern where we would have officers outside the stadium. Because again, it was like four minutes left in the game. How many officers Is there did a description you have of a suspect at this time or a suspect vehicle? Um, not at this time. Twice in under a year in a high school football game. What more can you guys do? Well, well, one of the things I can tell you is that um, we always um, take a look at um, our, our staff and plan. We always look at um, um, what can we do different. And, and again, we will be um, evaluating everything that took place today. Um, we'll be doing the same thing during the summer as we prepare for our football games um, for the 2019-2020 school year. So we'll be taking a look at um, our plans that we've utilized and we'll also be looking at some best practices from, from other locations as well. But one of the things I can tell you is that when you when you look at the situation like this, I mean, this is something that you that you just prepare for and and, and I must give um, kudos to uh, Ms. Pardue, she did a great job whenever this happened. She, she immediately locked down the area with my staff, and um, they was able, because we had fire rescue on scene, they was able to immediately provide assistance um, to the student. And um, um, so, so again, her and her staff did a great job along with, with my staff. But again, this is one of these unfortunate situations that, that we hope never happen again. But again, we will be evaluating all our plans um, as we prepare for the upcoming um, school year. Dr. Last Green, year. This is the, Dr. Green, this is the second time you have been faced 
with this. I remember the last game, uh, the last time this happened uh, during the season last year. Can you just talk about the frustration of having to address this one more time? Well, first, I want to convey my um, sympathy to the family and our thoughts and prayers are uh, right now focused on this young man and hoping that he will re uh, recover. Uh, yes, it is frustrating. It's uh, because I care for each and every one of our students and their safety is uh, of vital importance to our school district. And when we um, see violence that you can't explain, it is always going to lead to um, concern and frustration, but I have the great amount of confidence in our police department and our collaboration with JSO to ensure that, uh, as Ms. Pardue, uh, staff knew exactly what to do to ensure that the football players were all safe, cheerleaders, everyone was uh, safe inside the stadium and we were able to uh, dismiss in an organized manner. Last year when it happened over at Reigns, um, some games were moved to Saturday. I know it's soon, it's quickly after this event, but is that something that kind of comes back on the table that we have to talk about? Well, it is something we'll have to talk about. We'll have the summer to review, again, our procedures and practices and make that determination uh, as we move through the summer months. Could you speak to the practice of players lying down on the field when there is a disturbance? Is that what they're taught to do? Or? Yes, that is. You're watching News of, 4 Jax at uh, 11, live coverage of a breaking news event a at Terry Parker High School. Let's listen to Dr. Diana Green, to, the superintendent um, of the school. Ensure the protection of our football players or basketball players or any of our students that are uh, in competitive sports. Dr. Much, Green, have you had an opportunity to speak uh, to the parents yet, that the parents of this young man is now in the hospital? No, I have not, but uh, we have staff headed towards the hospital, to the hospital. The principal that will support that student is headed to the hospital to speak with the parents. How much change for you guys since the rain? We've made a dramatic change. Um, one is lighting. We've improved lighting at, at many of our locations. Uh, and Ms. Pardue can talk about the change that has been made here at Terry Parker at Rains. We um, it changed out almost every uh, piece of lighting to ensure that the, the locations of the parking lot around the stadium were well lit. Director Edwards, can you give us like a, a just kind of a summary timeline of how the events went down? Um, um, yes, I mean, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, the at approximately 901 is when this incident took place and at that time there was only four minutes left in the game so the game was was just about over and um, so again my staff was in the process of transitioning to help um, get traffic out um, we immediately um, got in contact with fire rescue that was working the game to immediately start providing um, first aid to this particular student. JSO was being notified at the same time to come provide um, assistance. They um, arrived pretty quick um, as normal. And um, again, it's just a great collaboration between um, both law enforcement agency as well as school personnel um, following their training and doing things that um, need to be done to make sure that we um, um, ensure safety for all our students, all our faculty members, and all visitors coming to um, one of our football games. Can you talk about, you talk about the, the victim in this case? Uh, you, you know, we're just starting the 11 o'clock newscast here. Can you just repeat what happened and how he was injured? Um, again, it was approximately four minutes left in the game, so that was like about 9.01. This individual was outside um, our main ticket gate, so he had not made entrance yet. So those individuals had not went through the wanding process where we search individuals to make sure that they have no weapons or firearms on, on, on the person. How's he doing now? Um, like I said, ma'am, I'm not at liberty to share that information, but JSO will be able to give you an update in about 30 minutes or less. Ms. Perdue, this is your school. I just wanted to hear from you, you know, just your thought process right now after having gone through this. Just what's going through your mind right now? Well, first of all, like Dr. Green said, my heart goes out to the family of the victim, first of all. Second of all, I think about my students, I think about my players, I think about all the hard work we do here every day at Terry Parker. And um, I wanna make sure that what happened tonight doesn't impact the culture in my school. Um, we are Terry Parker, home of the Braves, 
And I have students every day wearing Terry Parker shirts throughout the community, throughout the school. They're proud to be a Brave, and I just don't want that to change. Principal change Monday? You know, we're going to provide crisis to ensure that we have enough support here for our students. I think that um, we need to make sure that we have a lot of conversations and um, I'm prepared for that. And I have support from the district in that regard as well. Could you speak directly to Terry Parker parents right now who may be watching? Mm -hmm. um, to all the Terry Parker parents, um, I just wanna say thank you for your support in this event. I think that it's tragic. I think that we're gonna get through it as a family, home of the Braves. And if you can please continue to trust what we're doing here at Terry Parker, I appreciate everybody's support, and I ask you to continue to support Terry Parker. And principal was a victim of Terry Parker's student. Um, I'm going to let um, director answer that question. Okay. Um, again, um, like I said before, we we're not at. Okay. Again, we are not at liberty to provide that information, but again, um, JSO will be able to provide you that information because hopefully by now they've had opportunity to make contact with the family members. So once they um, get up, they'll be able to answer more from an investigative standpoint than what I'm able to do at this time. You mentioned he was in life-threatening, or he or she was in life-threatening condition. Um, yes, that's correct. Taken to the hospital. Yes. All right, it looks like we're pretty much wrapped up. Is there one last Thank question you. for anyone before Director we break Edwards, it? Apologies if you already answered this. How many officers were at the game? Um, again, um, when it comes to um, the number of officers at, at football game, that is one of those items that's actually um, protected under chapter 119. So I'm not at liberty to provide you that information, but I can tell you is that the number of officers I had um, was the number of officers I would have had if this game was played um, during the regular season. Normal staff. Yes, the normal staff, yes. And I think as Director Edwards says, JSO will have more information about this. I wanna thank you guys for coming and doing this. And again, appreciate you guys all being out here. Thank you.